Hi, Jim Wagner, your self-defense instructor. And what I'd like to cover today is how to use a tactical light, or you can call it in the UK, a torch. In fact, that's where I am today. I'm in the United Kingdom, and I'm at Paul Drury's uh, martial arts school, and I'm here to teach you about how to use a tactical light to protect yourself. Now, I'm not just talking about nighttime, I'm talking about using one even in broad daylight, or in a building like this. And to help me out is uh, Gary Dell, a reality-based personal protection instructor, as well as the director for the United Kingdom. As Jim said, um, I'm a level three reality-based personal protection instructor. I'm currently Jim's UK director here. Um, a little bit about myself. At the age of 15, I started in Tang Tso um, under the instruction of Paul Drury. Um, I then moved into other different forms of traditional based martial arts such as Kung Fu, um, Krav Maga and in 2005 I moved then to Jim Wagner's reality based personal protection system. Now because I'm in the United Kingdom, knives are not allowed for self defense. So what could I do in place of a knife? How about a tactical pen or a simple businessman's pen or businesswoman's pen that is made of metal? That will certainly be an improvised uh, edged weapon. And of course in my other hand, my secondary hand, I have a tactical light. And why would I need a tactical light? Well, when I shine this light into your eyes, what's your natural reaction? Like anybody, you don't want the light in your eyes. Now obviously the darker the place, the better. And uh, even though this, we're in a room, you can see how much light that this will give off, especially if it's a strobe. So when you buy a tactical light, and there's many companies that do it, some of the features you want is a thumb button. You want a, a button on the back where you can press it because you want it in this kind of configuration. Also, these have on the front what's called teeth. There's uh, some teeth on these that when you make an impact to the forehead, or to the ribs or somewhere, it's going to do some serious damage. And you want it that it's going to fit just nicely in the fist, alright? So, you have your primary weapon, and of course you can do a lot of stuff with it uh, to protect yourself, and then you have the light as a distraction. And so as he's coming up to you, he's going to react to it, and of course that, uh, especially in the night, or in a dark uh, pub, or in a back alley, uh, this could really uh, give him some, uh, or take away his night vision, basically take away his night vision. And of course, if he can't see this weapon coming, or he's trying to shield his eyes, you have an opportunity to, um, to compensate and then move in before he has a chance to get his night vision back. So I'm going to demonstrate on Gary kind of how this would work. Alright, now I'm in a slightly darker environment, not completely black, there's still a lot of ambient light, but you're going to see the dramatic effect once you shine a tactical light into the suspect's face. And then if you put it uh, on strobe, uh, this is really going to psych him out, because psychologically it's going to uh, get off his timing. And it's just enough, of course, to come in and do what you have to do in order to protect yourself all right and if you don't have a uh, if you don't have a weapon in your hand whether it's a, a knife or a gun uh, don't forget that this tactical light this is a weapon in and of itself especially the ones with the teeth just around the lens so hopefully this information helps you buy a small tactical light that fits in your uh, in your hand and uh, make sure the batteries are always uh, fresh and uh, carry it with you. It's got to be with you if it's going to be effective. Be a hard target.